Over the last couple of weeks, my life has been turned upside down. And that's because I finally got around to working on this, my 1989 Honda Aero Deck with the very rusty rear wheel arches. And in this video, I'm going to show you where I've got to and how I got there. There is a whole lot of new metal here, where once there was just holes and rust and a whole load of nonsense. But that said, where I've got to isn't quite where I'd hoped, because there is just so much rust and metal that's worn very thin. But first, a very quick recap. The Aero Deck had a small amount of rust bubbling through on this wheel arch that I wanted to deal with before it got any worse. So I cut out the rust and found that it had been repaired with some filler, which wasn't a long-term solution, and the more I cut, the more filler and the less actual car I found. In fact, I soon ended up with such an expanse of fresh air and rot that I was in danger of losing track of what the car was actually supposed to look like. Luckily, I did manage to track down some outer arch repair panels while browsing German eBay one evening, as you do, which meant I could make this datum so that I knew where the inner arch needed to end up. That wasn't the only tricky part. The trouble is it's very complicated sheet metal. We've got this part here, I think this is all one, and then you've got another part here that loops round. Um, the floor section, it folds around behind here. And then you've got this kind of strip uh, that joins the inner arch to the to basically the outer arch to the outer bodywork here, and that strip has more or less disappeared. So I'm going to re I'm going to remake the bottom corner here. I'm just going to remake the bottom of this inner arch. This is the line of the of the floor of the boot, uh, which folds over a, a, a flange that this is welded onto, spot welded sort of here, which is kind of disintegrated at that level below the floor. This looks solid, but really isn't. This sort of edge bit's not too bad, but it's all got to come out, really. I'm putting a bead on the edge of this new panel with the bead roller here, partly to match the profile of the original, but also to give it strength, see how it makes it harder to bend. After I deburr the edges with my deburring tool, it's back to the car with the cardboard template so that I can mark off where the bends need to be. It's not a completely even smooth curve, it's got a couple of points of inflection. So we'll hammer it out on the leather bag here. All this hammering gets it nicely to the right sort of shape, but it leaves it full of little dents. So I'm going across to the English wheel to smooth those out. I'm not putting any shape into it really here on the wheel, I'm just smoothing out those dents. So far so good, but unfortunately it's not quite as simple as this flattish piece. You can see, how well you can see, on film, there's a complex uh, recess here. So what I'm going to do, because this is the bit that matters, and maybe that bit, I'm going to cut out. I'm going to cut out a section here, and then weld it in. And then I'll fill in this upper part that's all rusty and missing as well, and do it in two parts. Two parts, you think? Ah, the optimism of the younger me. And then uh, if I need to have a, a fillet that joins in between the two of them, then I can do that and that's just going to be easier than trying to get one piece uh, all to be this really complex shape.
I'm just drawing freehand the slots that I need to cut out for this tab for the mud flap to mount to. That's a pretty good fit. It's got a little bit of overlap on the left hand side there, which was kind of deliberate. I wanted to err on the side of caution, but that's a really nice fit. So this is where we've got to. We've got this piece uh, clamped in place. There's just about enough decent metal there to clamp onto, and that's about it. All of this stuff has got to go. Um, I need to cut off that edge and cut the flange behind it that goes around goes around I can't see the thing goes around this corner and joins up against this the other side of there this lower flange is quite solid and still worth keeping as a sort of datum and just because well, perfectly good steel above here though the flange is eaten away so I'm gonna have to kind of replace that and then I've got to cut a horizontal line along here because that's another flange where it joins this floor piece, I don't know if you can see that, and then maybe try and keep this bit which is okay, just needs a bit of, it's got a tiny bit of surface rust on, on there but that's solid, I'll just grind off when I clean it up with a flat wheel. And then the shape of this doesn't matter because the important bit of the shape is this lower piece I've done with this tab here which is where the mud flap bolts into and that needs to be in, in the right place in three-dimensional space which is why I've left it open as a tab. I will obviously infill those gaps with bits of steel, weld it in, grind it back, uh, but not until I've refitted, at least trial fitted the bumper because the mud flap needs to mesh up against the bumper as well. It's quite a complicated series of working out what order to do things in. That's, that's the kind of tricky, challenging bit. I've taken that off, but that's not a metal edge that I can weld to. It's too rusty, too thin. So all of this bit is going to have to come out. Looks like some spot welds there that I could drill out. I'm marking the centre of the spot welds with a wood screw used as a punch and then I'll use a spot weld drill bit to isolate the welds from the surrounding metal, which I can then peel back. So with that sliver of metal cut out and the exposed face ground back, I can hammer it flat in shape on the bench and then use it as a template to cut out a fresh piece of sheet steel. I'll drill a couple of holes in it so that I can put plug welds in and then they'll replace the spot welds that were there before where the boot floor section attaches. I'm covering the exposed surfaces with a bit of weld through primer just to stop any rust from getting in there. Of course what I should have done is cut away all this seam sealer here so that it doesn't contaminate the weld. But more on that story later. In fact I'm coating all of these new bits of metal with weld through primer as well because it's a pretty damp atmosphere in here and I don't want them flashing over with surface rust while I'm still working. It's five degrees in here and quite damp. You might be able to hear the rain on the roof. Uh, it's really cold and I can't feel my fingers. Good job I've got a quality hat. And so it's time to get busy with the magic sparkly electric glue gun. The welding does mean some flashing lights throughout this chapter, so skip to the next one if you're sensitive to that sort of thing. 
I'm MIG welding all of this and so that I don't warp the panels I'm stitch welding it uh, one point at a time and then going round and joining the points up. This doesn't make for the prettiest of welds, especially if you're not highly skilled like I'm not, or if you're burning the seam sealer behind that you haven't cleaned up. It looks terrible. After linishing it back with a 40 grit flat wheel, I mean obviously it looks ugly, but you can see it's starting to get there if we fill in the gaps. So after another pass, I've done the I've done the plug welds not very well, so they they're a little bit holy still. Uh, they need filling in. But you can see I'm filling in the gaps around the edge. I mean it's still ugly as anything, but but we'll we'll gradually fill in the bits and then we'll linish it back a bit further and it'll look okay. Another couple of passes, I think. I'm grinding it back here mainly so that I can see what I'm doing and how I'm getting on. And that does reveal that we're getting decent penetration and gradually filling up the holes, although it's not brilliant, there's a way to go. Down the right hand side it's very thin, but we'll come back to that later. So this bit's messy, so we'll take up most of that. And all of this has got to be cut back. You can see how the, how the rust's got into the seam here. I'll leave this tab for all of this and the bottom of that has got to come out. If this area here is worrying you then you'd be right to be worried but hold that thought for the moment. I want a pen on here and, and there because I've over linished this corner and made it thin and then we'll have a cut along there and go and go around the back. So we're underneath the car looking up now, around the back of the wheel arch. The wheel goes here, and I'm thinking cutting strategies. So I'm going to cut across here, just below the curve here, straight down and across to where I've cut that notch from the other side. Always adds a little free on of excitement holding a naked cutting blade rotating at high speed, at full stretch in my wrong hand, directly above my wrist. After a bit of a go with the soda blaster, I'm happy that that's not rusty. It's not the neatest, but by the time I've welded it up, that'll disappear. Double skin is fine. There's no rust in there, it's just clean metal. Let's go more power and a touch and a bit more wire feed as well. With the lower piece welded in, it's time for the next bit of cardboard aided design. The piece needs a bit more curve on it, so we'll do that in the stretcher. And then it's a question of just trial and error, hammering it and folding it and retrying it to see what needs doing until we get to this actually surprisingly complex shape for just a small fillet that goes around a corner. The gaps around it are a bit bigger than I'd ideally want, but I can fill those with weld and it'll all look fine once it's covered in epoxy mastic. I appear to have injured myself. Shining a light behind it, you can see the pinholes where I still need to fill in the gaps, but it's getting there. So the final missing space looks like a nice simple rectangle, but it isn't. It's correct up to about 
there. So if I put a crease along that line there, and then bend that back, that should fit nicely. Well, it sort of fits, but I wouldn't say nicely. There's quite a lot more folding and manipulation to do to get it to the right shape. It has to line up along the edges on all four sides, otherwise I'm not going to be able to get nice, strong, clean butt welds. In the wheel arch there, it just looks like a rectangle, but actually it's a surprisingly complicated three-dimensional shape. You've got this kind of hockey stick shape, top and bottom, but the curve is at different points. It's got a kind of twist in it. Almost all of this steel has come off my scrap pile, or at least my storage, so some of it's got a bit of surface rust on it. So before welding it into place and priming it, I'm cleaning it up here using some aluminium oxide blast medium in my blasting cabinet. Aluminium oxide is pretty nasty stuff and you get clouds of it come out of the cabinet when you open the lid like this. So it's definitely a job to be done wearing a decent respirator face mask. But it does get it lovely and clean and ready for paint and weld. Not necessarily in that order. gone brilliantly well it's it's tacked in but there's a bit of a there's more of a gap than I wanted at the top and it's actually started to burn through there as well which hasn't helped uh, so it's a bit closer at the bottom than it needs to be and there's a big gap at the top it's not brilliant uh, I think I'm probably just gonna end up bridging that with weld Light shining behind it, you can see all the holes in the stitching. So I do need to run through and fill some of those holes in. Penetration is good, but I just need a little bit more. I just need to fill the holes in, basically. The penetration is probably better described as good in parts. There's an area in the top right here that I'm not happy with and will end up redoing because it's just worn too thin and I'm chasing holes. pretty but equally it's not full of holes anymore and so after a bit more grinding back to tidy things up it looks like this is it perfect no is it good enough i reckon it is but sadly i was just being way too optimistic this part here is far too thin and filling in the holes just leads to it burning through and creates more holes to chase so I have cut another patch out of an off cut of steel. I've just, I've just clamped it on there and I'm going to cut around it and weld that in and then it'll be, uh, then I'll be happy. The rest of it uh, is strong enough. The metal's worn very thin along the right hand edge of where I put that uppermost patch in. My plug weld to the floor section is okay, but actually, oddly, there seems to be no real attachment where I'd expect a spot weld from the factory further to the right, where what I've cut out here is actually the original metal, not my replacement. I also think this seam sealer isn't helping and is potentially contaminating the welds, so we'll take that out as well. There's sound deadening felt here as well, so as well as getting this seam sealer mastic stuff out, I need to cut that away so that it doesn't catch fire. The bottom couple of centimetres of that, I think, are not doing a huge amount of, making a huge amount of difference soundproofing wise, so we'll just carve those off there.
I mentioned soda blasting earlier and here is the blasting gun. It'll take any medium but I've got it filled with bicarbonate of soda which is a pretty mild abrasive. It'll take surface rust off and it'll take dirt and it'll take primer as well but generally it'll leave paint behind. So it's really good for just cleaning things up as a last stage before you apply paint or for that matter before welding. A quick spray into the seam with the weld through primer and then with the patch clamped into place I'm ready to start welding. Because there was good metal underneath I could make this piece slightly differently, hammering it into the shape of the metal underneath and then cutting round it which makes for a nice neat fit. That's tacked in alright. There's a big gap on the right hand side there but I think I'm going to have to replace that anyway. You can see a hole just there where it's blown through because that bit of metal that I haven't replaced is too thin so I think I'm going to have to replace it. But I'll go around and sort out the welds around the rest of it. And there goes the camera. Still, now you know what bicarb and rust mixed together looks like in super close up. It looks like that after welding up which sort of looks okay except up at the top here and the bottom right it's all blown through. If I shine the light behind it you can see because the metal is just too thin to weld to. Happily there's a solution to this which is to take an off cut of copper pipe slit it and hammer it flat and then you can clamp that behind the holy part to act as a heatsink. With the power turned down on the welder I can start to weld in the holes then and it won't blow through the metal and I won't be forever chasing more holes. This is a top tip that I've not tried before but it does really work and means I can fill in these thin parts and finish off the job. It would also help if I could break this habit of moving the welding torch away as soon as the welding stops because I'm missing the benefit of the cooling flow of gas. But still, nobody's perfect, eh? And then there's just a final coat of Built Hamber Electrox Primer which will be a good base for the epoxy mastic coat that'll go on top eventually. But I'm not going to do that until I finish all the rest of the welding because there's plenty more to do yet. So this will keep it from rusting in the meantime. And that's as far as I got because at that point I ran out of MIG welding gas. So it'll have to wait. And that means that instead of welding together bits of metal I'm switching to welding together bits of film so that I can make this video. So thanks for watching and see you again next time.